Okay, so I have a couple of coolers for the Raspberry Pi 5. This one is the official active cooler from the Raspberry Pi Foundation and this one is an ice tower cooler from 52Pi. As you can see, both of them have fans uh, and both of those fans are temperature controlled by the operating system, which is great. But uh, I thought I'd try them without the fans initially. So basically unplug this fan cable. And on this one, which I haven't attached yet, you can see it comes with this little protective cover there. And this goes over the CPU, so it must be this way around. So let's make sure this is properly lined up before it goes on. One pushing through. I did actually put this on before. It's quite difficult to take off. Uh, and here's the second one. There you go, that's in place. So that's nice and firmly on various different components. So one of the things that have been said about the ice tower cooler is that it only cools the CPU. So you can see here, the only point of contact really is the CPU, which is the GPU as well, but uh, not the RAM and not any of the other bits that may get hot. But it is a lot smaller, so uh, it will be interesting to see how well both of these heat up. Uh, I figured because I've got two 8 gig Pis, I'd run both of them with exactly the same OS at the same time and just sort of monitor the temperature on them. So luckily I have two monitors uh, so and two Pis. Let's plug in this SSD drive. I'm going to use with the Bluetooth mouse and keyboard this unfoldable one. I'm going to need this keyboard initially for setup to pair the Bluetooth. HDMI to micro adapter. And I haven't thought about this, but I'm going to have to unbox my second 27 watt official power supply. Uh, so I've already got one plugged into here. But now I'm going to plug this one in. But before I switch them both on, I'm going to leave them for a good 20 minutes or so because this one has been on. Well, there's no heat in the cooler at all that I can notice, but I'm going to leave it for a good 20 minutes so it's a fair test. While I'm waiting, I thought I'd boot up my 4 gig Pi, which isn't going to be used in these tests, to see which bits get the hottest. So this is uh, another case fan, uh, and as you can see I've removed the top and everything so I can get access to it. But I can have a look on my little thermal mapping camera to be able to see which bits get hot uh, when it's running. Okay, so it's been on a little while and uh, we can definitely see the hottest temperature is where the power is coming in. So this is the USB-C cable here and uh, this is obviously where the power is coming in. Uh, we've got whatever this is at 27.3 degrees. That is the wireless and Bluetooth adapter, which isn't doing anything at the moment because uh, I'm not using wireless or Bluetooth. Uh, then we've got the CPU, which is currently at 24 degrees. This is the RAM at 44 degrees, where the little point is. The RP1 chip at 48.7 degrees. And the Ethernet transceiver here at 44, 45 degrees. I am using Ethernet, but I'm not really using a lot of data. So let's heat this up. Uh, let's run Handbrake. Okay, so let's open the source, which is on my desktop. As you can see, there's a video file there. So home and desktop and test. And this time I'm just going to save it as 720. So very fast, 720.30. And let's hit start. And if I open HTOP, we can see what the CPU is doing. All cores are running it near to 100%. And uh, temperature, it says it's 83 degrees at the moment. Wow. Uh, so let's have a look. Well, the CPU says it's at 29.6, 29.7. The power is hard to read, about 64 degrees. That was the wireless chip, which is about the same. The RAM, 53, 54, 54 for the RP1 chip. And the ethernet chip around about 50. So it's weird, isn't it? The, the CPU with this, I mean, obviously it's under a, a metal plate, um, but uh, it's definitely cooler on the outside of that than the actual CPU is. So that encoder's done. Uh, it's already dropped down to 62 degrees. Uh, let's do a sysbench test. So if I open another terminal, I've got this that runs for 
120 seconds and it runs at four threads at 100 percent so let's see what happens it's definitely be thermal throttling doing this but it's interesting it's definitely interesting to see how it looks under this you can see even the cable itself look 27 degrees the power supply is well you can tell which one's on look this one's on at 26 degrees uh, this is on as well which is my USB-C hub which I'm not using at the moment um, but this power adapter is turned off so this is my Pi uh, which has got the official Raspberry Pi cooler on it and this is the one with the ice tower cooler on it so at least I can see that that's nice and cool now so I'll be able to do my test in a minute so it says 85 degrees on P sensor uh, oh something was 60 there it's more the RAM that gets hot or is that yeah, that's underneath the CPU, isn't it? So there we get a more accurate reading. See that white, white, light orange line around it? That's giving a much more accurate reading. 67 I was getting there. Yeah, that's interesting. But that's definitely the hottest part. Just a little view from a distance. And if I look down underneath my desk, I'll probably see some of the plug, yeah, you see some of the plug sockets that are on. My router's down there as well. These are so good. I've got a separate video on this camera if you're interested in it. It plugs into an iPhone. Okay, so that test is all done. I'm happy with that. It was just to see what heated up, really. I've changed my mind about which keyboard because uh, the Bluetooth one would mean using the Bluetooth module, so that probably wouldn't be a fair test. So this is using a USB, uh, just the same as my Logitech one is using a USB in here as well. So let's switch them both on. Should come on at a similar time. Uh, one's going through a capture device. The one on the right. Okay, they're behaving a little bit differently. Not entirely sure why one was much quicker than the other, but it won't be to do with temperature at this stage. So let's log both in. And let's get it doing that same benchmark at the same time. Okay, so that's started at the same time. Let's launch P sensor on both of them. Okay, so official Pi adapter has already gone to 48 degrees and the ice tower cooler is at 38 degrees. But obviously this is only measuring the CPU. So I obviously I don't know what temperature the other parts are getting up to. But from a CPU point of view, it's definitely passively cooling it better. So 50 degrees, 39 degrees. And this one still seems to be going up. So, oh no, it's cooling a bit now. Of course, at some point it could thermal throttle. Need to get H top on there. So it's maxed out. And this one's maxed out. And I guess because it hasn't got to the temperature that it would start to thermal throttle, at this stage, which is nice to see, considering it is running at 100%. But you can see 42 degrees is the current temperature versus 55 degrees on the official Pi active cooler. Let's cool down a bit now. All oh, the cores have gone right down. Oh, it's because it's finished. Right, let's run that test again. I might need to run this test for longer. Again, you can see it's running at 100%. 56 degrees because obviously I haven't given it time to cool down but here we're only at 45 degrees and again all cores running at 100% so I'll keep an eye on them and I'll try and see if they thermal throttle but at the moment they're both running at 100% because it's only 58 degrees to be fair what it does show is the passive cooling of both of them is excellent anyway and obviously this is a lot lower profile so there's going to be reasons that you're going to get this plus it's cheaper as well very cheap this isn't a you know which one is better or anything like that they are very different but i was just interested to see which one cooled passively better because this spans more components but this concentrates more on the cpu yeah it's not it's not getting hot enough and it and it's not thermal throttling so what i think i'm going to do is uh after this test i'm going to run it for well this is two minutes i think i'm going to go for maybe eight minutes but let's, let's wait till it finishes and see what the hottest temperature it got to was. And remember, ordinarily, both of these would have a fan and that fan would kick in uh, and basically just keep it cool. And it also runs at a really low speed initially and that's usually enough to keep it cool. 
I definitely haven't heard either fan running at a high speed in previous tests. Okay, so it's, they've, they've both gone right down again now. So I need to change this to uh, from 120 seconds to 480. And the same with this one. So both 480, maximum temperature this one's got to so far is 63. And this one, the maximum temperature it's got to is 49. And here you can see it's also on 480. So let's hit OK at the same time and get each top on the top so I can keep an eye. So it's already up to 60 degrees on the left. So hopefully we'll get it to, to thermal throttle, but they are both running at 100% at this stage. I'm definitely gonna concentrate on this one because it is a higher value on the temperature. So what, 62 degrees at the moment. Still not thermal throttling though. 64, 65, yeah, come on. And both of these coolers, I do have the option of using thermal paste, which I've done in a separate video, and it definitely did help on the temperature. Come on, 66 degrees, still not thermal throttling. And they've just finished both of them at the same time, so it didn't thermal throttle. So I've got to run it again now. We just This one just went down to 99.3, just, just momentarily. I can't believe what's keeping it at a stable temperature if it's uh, at 100% CPU. It's very impressive and you can kind of see why they've clocked this Pi at 2.4 gigahertz because without active cooling it actually copes really well. So we did get up to 81 degrees for a split second. Obviously if I overclock this would go up much quicker but I think I'll probably save that for a different video. It's funny that we get in down here we get 100.3% uh, at different times. But yeah I think, I think that concludes that they both do well. The maximum temperature this one's got to is 82 degrees and the ice tower cooler has got to 63 degrees. So I don't know how much difference it makes uh, with uh, being able to cool the whole lot. So it'll be interesting to see if we do get more solutions that, that cover more components and take that up through to the heatsink. But this does seem to be staying nice and cool. So at the moment it's saying it's 82 degrees and we can see that that heat is being dissipated nicely over that cooler. About 60 degrees on the top there, some of it's, well the 73 was probably the power again when it momentarily went higher. And then if we go over to the ice tower cooler, then the cooler is lovely and cool. And if we go down to the bottom, these components here, we might be able to see in here, look, 54 degrees. Not sure if I can get a better angle than that but you can see that it's definitely keeping it at a nice cool temperature considering we're running this at 100%. Okay, so I think I'm gonna leave it there, but uh, yeah, I'm very impressed with how well the Pi performs anyway under passive cooling, but both solutions are really decent. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.